Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So a few of you have asked me about online dating just to give you some more information. So today I'm going to give you some more information. Stay tuned. All right, family, so online dating, some of the benefits of online dating. I've already given you some in the previous video, so go ahead and check that out after this one, of course, if you have not already seen that information that I gave out previously. However, I do have several notes on this video right here. I'm going to talk to you guys about um, what your profile should look like, how uh, what you should actually say in your messages, some things that you should just be aware of. And I talked about this book um, in the, uh, what did I just do? Accent Challenge. So Aziz, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember how you say his name. But anyway, the title is Modern Romance. And I'm going to read a passage from this book because this book seriously was very interesting. And I could spend a long time giving a review about this particular book and just different things that it brought up. And it did bring up online dating. So let's just go ahead and start there. I'm going to go ahead and read a passage from here. Um, it's a long passage, so just bear with me. Online dating is the second job that requires knowledge and skills that very few of us have. In fact, most of us have no clue what we're doing, which that's kind of true. One reason is that people don't always know what they're looking for in a soulmate, unlike when we're picking something easier like laundry detergent. While we may think we know what we want, we often are wrong. According to Dan Slater's history on online dating, Love in the Time of Algorithms, which is the title, the first online dating services tried to find matches for clients based almost exclusively on what clients said that they wanted. The client would usually fill out a survey indicating certain traits that they were looking for in a partner. For example, if a man said he was looking for a tall blonde woman with no kids and a college degree, the company showed him everyone who fit that particular description. But pretty soon, online dating companies realized that this just wasn't working. Now, in 2008, Match.com hired uh, Mr. Thrombe as its new tr chief of algorithms. Thrombe set about figuring out why a lot of the couples that Match.com's algorithms said were perfect fit for each other often didn't make it past the first date. When he began digging into the data, he discovered something surprising. The kind of partner people said that they were looking for didn't match up to what the kind of, I'm sorry, the kind of partner the person said they were looking for didn't match up with the kind of partner they were actually interested in. Remember, I gave you guys some information about the um, the guys choosing the, the woman. When we talked about how uh, if, the, if the guy is uh, intimidated by a smart or intelligent woman, this is something that plays into that. Which, you know, they're looking for, you say that you want a smart, intelligent woman, but the person that you actually go out on a date with is not the most intelligent or whatever it is that they're specifically looking for. So in this case, he was talking about a tall um, blonde and who he was actually seeing was not a tall blonde. Anyway, I'm going to finish this up. Thrombe discovered that simply analyzing the discrepancy between the characteristics people said that they wanted in a romantic partner, which is like their age, religion, hair color, and the like, and the characteristics of people whom they actually contacted on the dating site, we began to see how frequently people break their own rules, he told Slater. When you match I'm sorry. <laughs> when you watch their browsing habits, their actual behavior on the site, you see them go away outside of what they say that they want. So just remember that what you say, what you want and who you actually contact most of the time just don't match up. And that's for men and women. So just keep that in mind. So. Now let's talk about some of the things that um, you should be putting on your profile, some of the things that you should uh, stay away from and look for and all this other stuff. So. Some of the things that uh, you should put on your profile is that um, instead of you saying that you like to have fun or instead of you saying you like to go hiking, show pictures of you having fun or show pictures of you having hiking. Basically, whatever hobbies that you say that you would just type out in your description and say, um, hey, I, I, I love reading poetry. Make sure you have a picture or something like that of you reading poetry or just being engaged when you, when you post the pictures. Post your pictures about the things or the hobbies that you are really engaged in doing. So instead of you just typing, I like to hike, show pictures of you actually hiking or um, skydiving. Show pictures of you actually skydiving. Now, 
I'm not saying don't write it in your description. Put it in your description, but make sure that it matches the pictures that you are showing. Those are also the pictures that um, get the most um, feedback and people are contacting them more when they're showing hobbies that they're actually interested in and actually doing. Now, some of the things that women, uh, you should and should not be doing on the pictures that you are posting. So, in this book, I took all I took most of this information from Modern Romance. So let me just say that as well, which I found was very interesting. Anyway, so women, the pictures that do not get the hits for women. So keep this in mind. Women with animals don't get a lot of hits. Women with they cocktail in they okay, this is water, but you get my point. Women with a cocktail in their hand don't get a lot of hits. Uh, and then women that like look directly at the camera and smile don't get a lot of hits. Now let's talk about a few things that you can do, ladies, to get more hits on your profile. Um, so you want to have pictures with you smiling, laughing, and have friends in your pictures, but not every single picture, right? You want to have pictures of just you and then some with you out with your friends. Um, the pictures where you're kind of... Okay, kind of angling down the camera. You know how we kind of look up, kind of look up at the camera like this? We get more, as women, get more um, hits on your pictures when you have, basically, you looking up. Also, while you're looking up, when you have a flirty look at the camera, you also get more hits with that as well. Now, let's go on to the men because I know that you are here too. Welcome. Anywho, <laughs> so surprisingly enough, men are on the opposite end of the spectrum, which they get a lot more hits when they have an animal in there. And of course, a child in the picture, they get a lot more hits. They get a lot more hits when they're not looking at the camera at all. Men, you get a lot more hits when you're looking off to the side with kind of like a smirk on your face. Not a smile, though. A smirk on your face. But you're looking off to the side, not at the camera at all. Of course, you guys that have those six packs, of course, you're getting a lot of hits. Now, me personally, when I was in a dating phase... I didn't message you when you were showing all your chest because if we get together, I don't need everybody knowing what you got. That's just me personally. But as, as far as the research goes, the men with the six-pack showing do get a lot of hits, which is self-explanatory. Now, let's move on past the pictures and go on to the messaging strategy. Some of the things that you should and should not be doing as far as what you say saying to the person at your very first message to them. Okay, so... The best length of the message is 40 to 60 characters. Now, I haven't counted what 40 or 60 characters actually looks like, but for your first reaching out to them, you want it to be something very simple but direct, and you want to specifically talk about something that they spoke about in their profile or what what they're doing in their picture. So something simple. Another thing that they brought up was don't take too long or being too... Uh, detailed or uh, not detailed uh, basically putting too much thought into your message because those messages hardly ever get read like you're putting your heart and soul into them and you can't kind of come off as creepy because the person doesn't know you so don't overthink what you're going to send the person look at the profile look at the pictures choose something specific from that and then send them a message about that or about those things but keep it short and simple because you don't know this person yet you don't know if they're even attracted back to you so you don't want to put your heart and soul into uh the first message before they even say hey i'm interested too and you know that by the messaging you back so just keep that in mind of course you want it to be a genuine message you can always have a genuine message when you are going off of something on their profile because most of us have different profiles uh, uh, as far as what we're into as far as the hobbies and stuff that most people look at so be genuine in the message and do not do not do not <laughs> send out the same mass message and it kind of you can kind of tell when somebody is sending you a mass message because it's very generalized and it doesn't have your name or even your username. It doesn't have anything particular about your specific, what you said in your specific profile. It's just very generic and those do not get answered most of the time. So if you are a mass, let me send out these 20, 30 same messages to 30, you know, different people. Yours is probably not going to be answered, and I can see why, because I remember when I was in the dating phase also, I would absolutely answer the person that said something about my profile. So you got to remember how you answer your profile is the same way that you should be typing out. 
so they know that they can come to you uh, not come to you, but come back to your profile and at least give it a give it a glance, even if they're not interested. Most sites will tell you um, that the person has been to your profile, and then you know you can move on from it. You can even block them because there's no sense in letting them keep coming back into your um, circle when they're not interested in you. All right. One of the last things with the messages is do not go back and forth for a lengthy period of time. Um, you want to use this as a meeting site. I know that they call them dating sites, and actually that was very interesting because they put that in the book. One of the I can't remember her name, and I'm not looking it up, but <laughs> uh, one of the people that they were um, getting information from, she basically said, "Don't stay as online all the time because again, you, they become your pen pal. You know nothing about them. There's no chemistry there. So you know, a couple times going back and forth over over a week, maybe over two weeks or something like that. But you don't want it to be a month, two months, three months where you just turn it into a pen pal. You've never met that per met that person, especially if you guys are in the same city. Now, if you are traveling long distance, that might be something different. But if you are in the same city and y'all just going back and forth for months, why? <laughs> why like drop that person by drop them like a bad habit seriously drop them like a bad habit you are wasting your time you're wasting your energy because as I always say we do what we want to do and we see who we want to see so if that person really wanted to see you they would make time to see you especially in the same city anywho oh some of the things that uh, I thought was very interesting which is some of the areas that men and women lie about online <laughs> All right, let's talk about the lying women first. <laughs> Love it. All right, most of the time, women lie about their body type or uh, their weight, and they also lie about most of the time their age. This is like the more common than men. Their age is more common than men. Now, those are the two things that most of the time women are lying about, <laughs> which is funny. Anyway, most of the time, men are lying about their um, height. And their money, because some, sometimes the sites let you put on there like a range of what you make. Most of the time they're lying about their money, they're lying about their height, and they're also lying about their intentions. And what I mean by intentions is what they're looking for, what they're seeking. Like, you know, whether it says dating, long-term, marriage, all of this other stuff. Now, I told you guys in a video a long time ago, I honestly, I can't even remember when I said it, but um, some men lie intentionally on there, specifically all as far as their intentions, in order to get more women to message them so they know that they're not looking for a long-term relationship but they'll put long-term relationship they know that they're not looking for marriage but they'll put on the profile on uh, marriage and basically this is getting more women sent their way I told you I had a guy that actually did me like that so <laughs> I know that they be lying about this one and I know that the women be lying about the other stuff so just keep those things in mind and ladies I'm just telling you as far as the intention goes don't want don't do not 100% pay attention to the intention portion of it if you want to um, get to know the guy, then obviously message them. Ladies, let me just say, this is a very, very, very uh, easy time for you to be the approacher that I speak about. You can approach them in very first. You can send them a short message. If they respond, you guys can go back and forth. You can always switch the game and turn it back over into the hands of the man to be the pursuer. But online dating, you can absolutely message them first. Don't be scared. Now, my final information is the actual dating sites. Now, I talked about some of these dating sites in um, oh, Dating Over 50. I talked about some of these dating sites and Dating Over 50. Some of you guys have watched it, but I'll give you another list of dating sites. And most of you out there have heard about these dating sites, but I want to give them to you here now. So my list is Plenty of Fish, which is P-O-F. Uh, we have Zoosk. Z O O S K. We have um, Christian Mingo. We have J Date. We have, let's see, uh, Black People Meet, uh, Tinder, OK Cupid. Uh, and th there's actually one for Catholics too. It might be Catholic Mingo or something like that. And the only reason why I remember that one is because one of my co workers, she's Catholic, and she, that's where she met her husband. So, um, uh, OK Cupid, one of my friends is actually married from that site. I'm engaged from POF. And uh, there's a few other people that have met on Black People Meet and uh, Match. So those are all of the sites that I'm going to give you guys. I'll put them up there on the screen. But yeah, go ahead and check out those sites. 
be a conscious of what you are actually putting on these dating sites and don't spend too much on them. Go ahead and meet these people in person. All right. I will see you guys in the very next video. Of course, give me thumbs up if you like this. And if this is your very first time here, make sure that you hit the red subscribe button or the icon with my lovely face because I am here to give you guys so much more information while we decrease that divorce rate. So if you get the information up front, then you can work out your relationship and you'll see that it's so much easier to so much uh, better smoother transition within your relationship if you choose right in the beginning all right i'll see you soon